Hi folks, Mark here from Pondachi Solutions, uh, back with another Q&A response. Uh, we had a question come in from Tim recently who asked about duckweed uh, control. He wanted to know if there was a way to control duckweed organically. And uh, I wanted to cover that in this video as well as some other options. The, the simple answer to Tim's question is yes, we have had success in limiting duckweed blooms organically, but there's a couple key distinctions. Timing is very important and we'll get into that, but also I wanted to include some additional information. Well, at a, as a baseline, I think this information will be helpful to you if you have any kind of a weed or plant problem because of the resource I'm going to tell you about, but also uh, we want to make sure we identify duckweed as the problem accurately. And then we're going to talk about some traditional control options, which inevitably rely on aquatic herbicides. That's that's just your typical route. For some people, that's going to be fine. It's going to work, and that'll that'll be okay with their, their mindset. For others, people simply don't want to use chemicals, and there is a way to, to manage a duckweed problem appropriately, but timing is the most essential thing. So we'll, we'll talk about that towards the end of this video. So common duckweed, very, very um, widespread issue for people as you get into the summer months. You'll notice here that I'm on a website called Aquaplant. And this is from Texas A&M University. Aquaplant is a diagnostic an online diagnostic site that I use for identification. I send this to a lot of people. Help them identify the plants that they have uh, as well as algae growth. And then it will also provide descriptions and photographs that one can use to, to ID a plant. And then there's a management tab also included, which we'll talk about some management options. Now they don't tend to talk much about biologicals here. And that's fine. It's not something they're more traditionally oriented towards uh, conventional approaches, I would say. But in that way, they are very useful because there are cases you have to use certain products and you want to make sure that they're well targeted to the problem that you have. So Aquaplan is a great, uh, great resource. We'll include uh, links below the video for, for their website and you can get on there and investigate any kind of a plant problem you may have. Uh, for duckweed, if we're going to identify duckweed, and these pictures aren't huge, but you can see that these are small pellets, flat pellets, and uh, this is a great shot here showing the structure and the very small root structures coming off the plant, and then this is very typically what you'll see from a distance. These little beads are just covering the, the surface of the water. And when you see these small pellets, you know that you've probably got duckweed. There's different types of duckweed. Giant duckweed, there's water meal, which is similar, but these are all floaters. And because of their structure, you can see that they get all of their nutritional support, their fuel, from the water column directly. So that'll come in handy. Knowing that will come in handy later on for you. Some physical characteristics are noted here. And... You will often find duckweed on some pretty quiet ponds. You know, even with aeration, you can see duckweed bloom, and it'll get pushed to the outer edges. But uh, it's going to generally float around as the wind blows, and and I think the 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 bloom intensity, the bloom strength or coverage is going to be greatly determined by the amount of fuel that you've got in that pond, which is is the nutrients, the the uh, nitrogen, phosphorus that would drive this. Um, you know. Is it invasive? Well, it is a native plant. And, you know, interestingly, when we talk about duckweed eradication, you'll get a, a varied response from people who read about it. Some cannot imagine taking it out of the ecosystem because in, in moderate amounts, it's, it's an extremely healthy plant to have in a pond environment. It actually is an excellent water cleanser. It does provide food for some species and uh, some shade as well, which can be helpful. But when a plant becomes uh, dominating, when it overtakes a pond environment and covers up the whole surface, uh, that's problematic. You'll see duckweed used in small ponds, and it's a nice accent for them, but 
just to be honest, I mean, to each his own, but when somebody has a large body of water and the thing is covered in duckweed, that can be problematic. It can, you know, block sunlight, which is a very healthy component of a, of a pond's ecosystem. It will, at times, pull oxygen from the water as it goes through its life cycle. And although it is cleaning the water very nicely, when it dies off, which eventually it will, either within the season or at the end of the season, like all vegetation that is in a, in a pond body, it will eventually sink, die, and rot at the bottom. And as the years go by and you get bloom after bloom, just like algae, it's going to create issues long-term in a pond environment. And so I think a moderate to, to minimal amount around edges is fine. A little bit goes a long way. Uh, if you use it in a small pond, that's all well and good, whatever you find a good use for it. But it's not really the answer. Uh, I mean, it's it's more problematic when you get into certain ponds and if it gets too widespread. So let's talk a little bit about managing duckweed in a in a typical, uh, you know, more conventional way or approach. Now, the number one, I do I do like to use. I agree with this. It's physical removal through uh, raking or saning is a very productive process. It's labor intensive. It can be. And I'll include a, a skimmer device that has been used successfully below this video. Uh, I'll provide a link to that, which I think can be very, very useful for people to help remove it. I've also done a video previously on building a duckweed skimmer out of common things you might have around the house or that you can go pick up at a hardware store. And that might be worth investigation for you. Some people have had good success with it. The number two tip that's mentioned is using tilapia. And I've, I've become acquainted with a tilapia farm, an organic tilapia farm in Canada, who was using duckweed to as a food source for their fish. They loved it. They, they got super fat. They ate a lot of it. And it was very a very clean base to start from for their organic fish operations. But typically the tilapia in natural ponds, they are a tropical fish. They need warmer water in which to thrive. And so in most of the U.S., this is not going to work for people. The waters are going to be too cold seasonally as you get, you know, maybe through the summer months, but it won't be enough time to really get them up to speed. And then in the fall, they're going to try to hibernate or burrow into the mud and they're going to die. And it's just not going to work unless you're in a very warm water environment. So tilapia while they readily consume duckweed, it's not going to be a good option for most people. There's herbicides noted here too. Some of them are excellent. Some of them are good. Uh, there's, I guess, uh, uh, different ways to look at these things. Uh, fluoridones are, were commonly used as a duckweed or water meal control. They are very expensive and generally they have to treat the entire pond body, which for some people, this is just going to be cost prohibitive because we're talking about hundreds of dollars an ounce for some of this stuff. They're effective, but uh, they may not be the best remedy for many people just due to cost. However, the first two listed here are contact herbicides, which I tend to prefer if the duckweed problem is not widespread. In other words, for all of these products, no matter the, the type or the brand or whatever, they all recommend treating as early as possible in the growth cycle of the plant for the best control. If you wait until you get midsummer and the thing's been blooming strong for a month or two and it's all over the place, I'm not sure that you know it's the best time to treat it. A lot of times as I get into midsummer on, I'll just tell people to live with it until next spring you know, and try to be ready for it the next year. But, uh, but be that as it may, there are options listed here with some... Uh, trade and brand names also included uh, for no better way to say it pick your poison you know if these are used wisely and I think the contact herbicides can be done so because they're actually sprayed topically on the plant so that you don't have to treat the whole pond with it if you do get on a bloom early you can knock it down and get ahead of it and you know I'm a big fan if I have to use a, an, a a chemical, I would rather go topical and limited rather than pond-wide if I can help it. That's just my general 
premise. And so uh, we'll include a link to this page so you can read up on each of these treatments and see if anything really matches what you're looking for. Some of the precautions with using any of these chemical herbicides, I'd say the same with an algicide if you're treating algae. Ideally, make sure that you've got good aeration going in the pond. First and foremost, it will protect the fish. If you've got fish, there is a very strong possibility of an oxygen drop or depletion when these plants die off quickly, as they often do when they're treated chemically. So having a good robust aeration system will protect the fish through that stressful period. And uh, there's, there's other ways to go about it with the contact herbicides where you would treat segments of the growth at a time to minimize any risk. Uh, but just follow those, those directions with these products and, and any of the precautionary statements. Be sure to note those and don't just start spraying the stuff or dumping it in willy-nilly because you could end up with some bad uh, after effects from that. But uh, again, we'll include this page so that you can review this uh, information and decide how you want to go forward. Now, specifically to the question, can you control duckweed organically? Yes, you can, but it's critical that you get going before it ever shows up in the spring. We have had really good luck, actually, with using beneficial bacteria to limit, curb, or stop duckweed blooms as long as we have started to work on nutrient reduction using these microbes a month or two months ahead of when the duckweed would normally show up. Often it will, many ponds it will come around in June, July, whatever, when we really get into the peak of summer. So there's usually time for it. Now some ponds have a history of duckweed and they'll show it right early. So you want to try to get ahead of the bloom by at least a month, get some kind of a beneficial bacteria regimen going in there fairly aggressively, ideally with aeration. And when you get the nutrients sequestered or, or reduced in a pond environment, the duckweed simply cannot bloom out. It doesn't have the fuel. You might see some perimeter duckweed pop up. It might be very limited. If you want to treat that topically with something else like one of the herbicides, that's fine. Keep ahead of it. But for, for the most part, the very aggressive blooms have been managed that way. What happens if you try to do this once the duckweed has really started? Well, it's very different than algae in that you can reduce nutrient numbers with an algae bloom present, and it's often amazing how fast that can go away as the nutrients drop off. Duckweed seems to be a hardier plant. It can hold on a lot longer. Uh, it goes through its life cycles and stuff, but ultimately... Uh, it just hangs on a lot longer, and so the best way to deal with it organically is through prevention. And so that means getting started early, usually right after ice out or, or as soon as your water starts warming up in the spring, in April or, or May, and really going after it to get the nutrients down. It also will help with algae blooms too, um, but that's the way that you would deal with it organically. You could also try physically removing the brunt of it. Uh, if it has gotten out of hand on you using one of those uh, skimmers to remove the brunt of it while you try to lower nutrients with something biologically. But a few people, I think, have had some luck with that, but it's, it's still a harder, harder route to go than just getting ahead of the plant growth in the first place. So uh, that's the real key tip with trying to manage duckweed organically. Uh, the other thing I'll say, too, is that if you do get to a point where you decide to kill the plant off or the plant blooms strong through the year and then you let it die off in the uh, fall, it's not a bad idea to use a biological product at that point. In other words, if you've treated and killed the plant or if the plant has died, again, that's decomposing material at the bottom of the pond that you really don't want to just accumulate down there. And so using something like our, our Biosphere Pro or our Pond Biotics 10 would help uh, break that plant matter down and, and keep reducing the organic compost, if you will, uh, and the buildup down there. And that's a good step to take. So at any rate, if you have other questions, I'm sure I missed something in this video possibly, but uh, we'll include some of the links to some of these uh, things that we talked about in the video today. And if you have any additional questions, you can find me at pondalgesolutions.com. Just write in there or leave a comment below this video, 
and uh, we'll try to personally respond and offer advice where we can. At any rate, I hope you have a great day where you are. Enjoy your pond, and we'll talk to you again soon.